This video looks at integration by substitution. And the theorem that we have here is the anti-differentiation of a composite function. And it says we want to let g be a function whose range is in an interval i from a to b. And we're going to let f be another function that is continuous on the interval i. And if function g is differentiable on the domain and f and this is big F, is the antiderivative of little f on the interval, then we have the following integral here. It says we have the integral of f of g of x, okay, and I know this looks a little confusing here, but all this is saying is that we have f of g of x. This is your composite function. If we're looking at integrating f of g of x. So here we can think of g of x as simply the inside function. Okay, So that's all that this f of g of x is indicating. And we're saying that if we're going to integrate this f of g of x, then we need to have this g prime of x dx as well. And if so, this is just going to be equal to big F of g of x. Well, they tell us we're going to use here what we call u substitution. And it says we want to let u equal g of x. So if we let u equal g of x, now what is g of x? Well, g of x is the inside function. If you think of f of g of x, again, this is our composite function, f of g of x. And the inside function is g of x. And normally we're going to let the inside function be u. So that means we would have f of u. So we could rewrite this problem as the integral of f of u. Okay, so we're changing g of, g of x to u. Now, if we do that, then we need to calculate what is du. Well, du is the derivative of u, which would be g prime of x dx. So here, all of this would represent du. So we end up with now the integral of f of u du. So what we've done is we've changed our variable from x to u and hopefully into a form that we can easily integrate. And that's what we're doing over here when it says we want to let u equal g of x, which simply means we're going to let u equal the inside function. And then we take the derivative of u to determine du which is g prime of x dx. So then we have a more simplified function where we're looking at the integral of f of u du. Now, if this still seems a little confusing, uh, just bear with me. We're going to look at an example, and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. And where this is stemming from, if you recall, when we looked at taking derivatives, we had a process for finding the derivative of a composite function like f of g of x, if you recall, we used what was called the chain rule. Well, for integration, we don't really have a chain rule, but here we're going to use this integration by substitution, or sometimes we'll call it u substitution, because we're going to substitute the variable u in for part of our integrand. So here, this u substitution can be used to handle this composite function just like we used the chain rule when we were taking the derivative. So here we have some guidelines. Uh, it says choose a substitution. Usually it's best to choose the inner part of a composite function uh, such as a quantity raised to a power. Okay, And then we want to compute du and we can rewrite the integral in terms of the variable u and then we want to find the resulting integral in terms of u, then replace this to obtain the antiderivative in terms of x, and then we can always check the answer by taking the derivative. So let's go to the first step here. Step number one says we want to choose a substitution. Well, if we look at our problem, we have the integral of 2x, 
x squared plus 1 raised to the fourth dx. So if you think about this, what do you think the inside function is going to be? And here it gives you a hint. A lot of times this is a quantity that is raised to a power or just simply the inside part of the function. And hopefully you were able to identify u as the x squared plus 1. So we're going to let u equal x squared plus 1. So then we need to calculate du. Now, it says we're going to compute du. So that means we need to actually take the derivative of what we let u equal. So if we take the derivative here, the derivative of this would be 2x dx. Okay. So instead of writing, we're taking the derivative here with respect to x. So instead of writing du over dx, just like we talked about the differentiables, we're going to write it as du is equal to 2x dx. Now, if you look in our problem, do we have 2x dx? And if you notice, we have the 2x in the problem, and we also have the dx. So we could write this integral as x squared plus 1. And I'm going to write this as x squared plus 1 raised to the fourth and then we have 2x dx. Okay, now I like to kind of group this together before I move on to step three. And if you notice now, we have the integral of x squared plus 1, which is the u raised to the fourth, and then our 2x dx, which is representing our du. So if we go to step number three, we would then have the integral of x squared plus 1, which is u, so that would be u to the fourth, and then 2x dx is du. So notice we've simplified this integrand by changing the variable to u from 2x, x squared plus 1 to the fourth, to simply u to the fourth. So how do we integrate u to the fourth du? Well, you increase the power, so we get u to the fifth over 5 plus our constant because now we don't have any limits so this is an indefinite integral. Now our answer here is in terms of u. Okay, So we did number three and if we want to find the resulting integral I guess maybe we can go back here and say the resulting integral then would simply be u to the fifth over five plus our constant and the last step here is we need to rewrite our answer back in terms of x. So our original problem was in terms of x, so our answer is in terms of u. So we need to go back and do resubstitution. So the u is really x squared plus 1, so we would have x squared plus 1 to the fifth over 5 plus c. So there's our answer. And if we want to check this answer, then we know that if this is the answer up here, we can check the result by taking the derivative. So if this is here, f of x equals, I'm going to write this as 1 fifth times x squared plus 1 to the fifth power plus c. If we were to take the derivative now, if I take the derivative of this, we're going to use that chain rule. So 5 times 1 fifth becomes 1. So you would have then x squared plus 1 decrease the power to a 4. So we get the x squared plus 1 to the fourth. And now the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of x squared plus 1 would simply be 2x, and of course the derivative of zero, uh, c is equal to 0. And if you notice here, this is the same as the original problem, 2x, x squared plus 1 to the fourth, dx. So let's see if we can go through the same similar steps for the next example here. We have the integral of 3x squared 
multiplied by the square root of x cubed plus 1 dx. Well, the first step is you may want to rewrite this uh, to think of it as the integral here as, well, before we do that, let's see if you can figure out what to let u equal. We have a composite function because we have the square root of x cubed plus 1, so what's going to be our u? Okay, if you set the x cubed plus 1, notice here that's on the inside, so that's the inside function, x cubed plus 1, you would be correct. And then how do we find du? We take the derivative, and the derivative here would become 3x squared dx. Now, we go to the problem. Do we have 3x squared dx in the problem? If we look here, we have a 3x squared, and we also have the dx. So we're in good shape. Now, the question might be, what happens if we don't have that? Well, if we don't have that in the original problem, then we have to do some other technique or try something different, because once we find u, we're going to calculate du. We're going to take the derivative of u, and then if we don't have du in the problem, then we have to do something to fix it, otherwise we're not able to integrate. So our integral now becomes uh, the square root of x cubed plus 1. I'm going to write this as parentheses raised to the 1 half power. And we have x cubed plus 1, that is our u. And then of course our du, which is 3x squared dx. So usually when I have my du, I like to kind of group that over here at the end because once we integrate, what's going to happen is the du is going to disappear. So if we integrate now, or if we perform the uh, substitution rather, we would have the integral of x cubed plus 1. That would be what? u to the 1 half and 3x squared dx becomes du. Now, keep in mind, what happens when we integrate? Well, when we integrate here, the integral sign disappears and the du disappears. So we're going to have u raised to the 1 half plus 1. So that would be u to the 3 halves power. And remember, if we divide by 3 halves, we can div certainly divide by 3 halves. Or instead of doing that, we can multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 thirds. And then we have our plus c. But I want you to realize, once we integrate, what happened to the du? That disappears. So up here, what happens to the, if the du and the integral sign cancels out, then when we integrate up here, notice the 3x squared dx is going to disappear, and the integral sign is going to disappear. So really, all we're doing is we're taking our u, which is the x cubed plus 1 to the 1 half, is increasing the power, which is going to give us the... x cubed plus 1 raised to the 3 halves. And then you would divide by 3 halves or multiply by the 2 thirds just like we did here. So once you get enough practice, you can see this problem maybe without doing all of the actual substituting of the u because you realize that here this is really u to the 1 half. And all of this over here in green is our du. So if this is u to the 1 half, then you're just going to take this quantity of x cubed plus 1 raised to the 3 halves and multiply it by 2 thirds. So here we have our integral. And then, of course, we could take the derivative to check this. 3 halves times 2 thirds, you're going to get x cubed plus 1. And then the derivative of the inside would be 3x squared, which matches the original problem. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is with both of these examples, what was nice and convenient is once we took the derivative of u, we had this du, which in this case was 3x squared dx, was already here in the original problem. And if we go up to the previous example, we found u to be x squared plus 1. And again, this du, which was 2x dx, was already here in the original problem. If we don't have that du in the problem, we're not going to be able to take the integral, okay? And our next video, we're going to look at some examples as what we can do if we don't have du in the problem. 
uh, there's a couple things we can do to handle that and there's sometimes when we have to actually try a completely different technique if we do not have du in our integrand. So keep in mind here anytime you have a composite function and you're integrating typically you're going to let u equal this inside part this g of x we're going to let u equal the inside function and then that will allow us to use our u substitution.